The following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. We are back. Ask Claire on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. It is my pleasure to introduce Claire Hall. Claire. Hello, Ralph. Mo extraordinaire. That's what we decided in the moments leading up to getting the recording started. That will be your official title, at least in Claire land. And so I want to say it is so glad to be back with the second edition of Ask Claire, the newest addition to the lineup of the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. And last week, Ralph and I just talked about uh, a little bit about me and about my story and the far-ranging nature of this program. We talked about how I am a passionate lover of the great game of baseball, an amateur historian, a lover of good books, uh, a public servant, also a woman who just happens to be transgender. And uh, I'm very honored to welcome the very first guest to ask Claire, his microphone, a longtime friend and really a very special person in my life. Donna Ross. Good morning, Donna. Hey, how are you, Claire? I'm doing great. It is a, as we roll this, a drizzly, really downpoury Sunday morning, but there's a, a lot of light in my heart, and I hope in everybody else's as well. And so, uh, Donna, you know, uh, uh, Ralph encouraged us to be con, uh, uh, conversational and for Two old radio hands, that shouldn't be a problem. I'd just like to uh, kick it over to you to talk for a couple of minutes about uh, kind of the Donna Ross story and where Donna and Bill, uh, you know, how our lives have intersected through the years. Well, that's fair enough. I uh, First, I have to say I'm, I'm honored to be your first guest. That's uh, That I think is a, a dis- distinct honor, and yeah, you and I go back to somewhere into the mid-80s. We used to work at, what's the old radio joke about working at a small public radio station? You Uh know, it's almost cliche, but we worked together Uh at a small public radio station uh, in Portland, Oregon, and uh, you were there for, uh, I had been a student there, and you had been a student there, but we weren't Mm -hmm. students together. We wound up being co-workers for a couple of years before you went on to uh, graduate school at Northwestern, but got to know each mm-hmm. other fairly well, and we played slow pitch softball together, and we share a love of uh-huh. sports, and so um, we we go back many, many years, and we've been fortunate to be able to stay in touch and as friends uh, for those many, many years, um, where I made my uh, decision. Uh, Yes, I was in radio for many years. I I worked on the uh, local uh, Portland Winterhawk radio broadcast for many years and did a lot of things there. But uh, it was in toward the end of 2000 that I had to come to terms with who I am. Uh, And that's a, a point for almost all of us. At some point, Mm -hmm. we get to that point where we have to figure this out, and then we have to also figure out what we're going to do about it. Uh, As I grew up, I was married. I uh, had children. Radio isn't probably the most optimal career (laughs) to (laughs) transition. And so for many, many years, I didn't consider it to be a possibility. And then later in life, I um, I got the notion that it was too late for me to transition. So that was one of one of my what I call the walls. One of the walls mm-hmm. that I had was that uh, it was it, I didn't for whatever reason I didn't think people over forty forty five were allowed to transition. And now we're getting into the development of the internet. Uh, I have a computer. I'm doing some poking around, and I find out that people 45, 50, 60 years old are, in fact, transitioning and having surgeries. And so 
the idea that it was not too late for me started to germinate. Now, the other three walls that I had were that I was married, that I had children, and I figured this was going to cost some funds. And frankly, we weren't broke, but I didn't have funds to add to that. So uh, it was toward the end of 2000 that my marriage fell down. Uh, my kids were now 18 and 20. My wife and I sold our house, so now I had funds, and all of a sudden I, I had no more inhibitors to be able to hang on to. Uh, the walls came tumbling down. Uh, and so uh, it was then that I began a, a very long process into figuring out who I was and what I needed to do about it. I was fortunate that somewhere along that journey, I was able to engage a new relationship, and uh, my current wife and I, Christy, had been married since uh, the end of October of 2002, so we're coming up on our 16th anniversary here very soon, and she knew... Well, we happy met, anniversary uh, in advance. Well, thank That's you. Great. Um, we, uh, when we got together, she was aware that I was probably going to transition. Uh, it wasn't a guarantee at that point, but uh, she was okay with uh, whichever manifestation I felt best with. Um, so, I, yeah, at the end of uh, 2000, summer of 2004, uh, I finally made the, uh, the quantum leap, if you will. Uh, Ron no longer was around. It was Donna now. And uh, I, was, I was supported at work. Um, I was still back working at this radio station you and I grew up in. I'd been there mm -hmm. for like 22 years as an employee. Um, and then a another odd thing happened in our lives. My wife mm -hmm. uh, had an opportunity through her career to move to Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I'm an Oregon kid. I'd never lived any in any other place but Oregon. And But I was at a place in my life where it, this was a good move for her career-wise. But somehow, some way, I felt something good was there for me as well. Uh, what it was, I had no idea. What it turned out to be was in unbelievable. Uh, at first, I got involved with doing a lot of educational outreach uh, into various parts of uh, the Kansas City community. Um, I, I lectured at, I don't know, over 13 dozen, or not 13 dozen, but 13, 14 different schools and universities. Uh, I talked to a lot of social service groups. Um, I wound up, I, I, I like to say that I know that girls are smarter than boys, and I can <laughs> prove it, because as a boy, all I knew was hockey and softball, and as a girl, I was, I was teaching medicine to doctors, psychology to psychologists, law to lawyers, and I was actually, and this was the, the weirdest part for me, as a kid that grew up in an unchurched home, I wind up teaching the Bible to ministers. And then I became a minister. So uh, it was a very in incredible time for me as, as a second transformation, not so much physically, but certainly spiritually and emotionally, that I could go to a completely different place, a completely different culture, not only survive, but thrive. Uh, and to this day, many of the things that I was able to do there are uh, still active, one of which was the, the church I served in uh, was in St. Joseph, Missouri, just north of Kansas City. And my church organized and hosted the first LGBT pride celebration in that portion of the state. And this is a very conservative part of the state. Um, this weekend, as you and I are talking, yeah, I mean, and, and for a church to do that, that was the thing that that first um, Pride Festival was uh, such a surprise for the community that, one, uh, the, the constant refrain was, I can't believe this is finally happening here, i.e. St. Joseph, and two, yeah. I can't yeah. believe a church is doing this. Um we uh, later passed it off to a community-based group now, and they have moved it from June to September. So as you and I are talking on a Sunday morning, uh, they have wrapped up their sixth 
Pride Festival that they held September 14th and 15th. So a lot of the things that I did there uh, continue to live and breathe. And as to me, that's truly astonishing personally for the things that I was able to accomplish. That is fantastic. So, Donna, let me ask you something. I get the sense that uh, much like another friend of mine who has made the transition, uh, Bethany Grace Howe, who will be our guest on Ask Claire next weekend, that uh, both of you and then uh, me to a lesser but growing extent, uh, you know, I'm only three and a half months into publicly living as Claire, but It seems like when the opportunities come to educate, to advocate, and build community, I look at all three of us and I see us stepping forward maybe with a certain sense of obligation to uh, to give something back to uh, you know to to pay uh, and to pay it forward for all the. Uh, all the people and resources who have helped us along our own personal journeys, but also, you know, a really open, loving desire, knowing that this, you know, even though this may not be as hard as it used to be, it's still awfully hard, and and you just want to be there for somebody else who's negotiating the path. Is that fair? I think that's an apt description. Um, Yes, I felt... I needed to do my part to help smooth the path for others because others had smoothed the path for me. Um, The other part was while I was at the radio station in uh, in Portland uh, as an employee, I wound up also teaching radio broadcasting. So I had developed uh, a skill, I guess, at least the background and experience to also teach and so when I moved to Kansas City, I wanted to be involved in um, in some way to make life better. And I went to a, a conference, and I was only in town for about two and a half months, and there was a conference that had been organized for local uh, transgender people. And in that, I met uh, a trans man by the name of Jaron, who had been doing some advocacy work. And I introduced myself and said, you know, I'd like to help you out. And he just looked at me and smiled and said and shook my hand and said uh, a fateful word. He says, well, I'm glad to meet the new face of transgender in the community. Uh, Uh What I did not what I did not know at the time was Jaron wanted to withdraw from that, which is fine. Uh, Mm -hmm. Plus there really wasn't anybody else that had been doing it. And so Uh for probably, we lived in Kansas City for right at nine years, probably for the first five or six of that, if somebody wanted a presentation on transgender understanding or transgender and the law and psychology and medicine and the Bible and religion and all of those things, I was the one that got called. Uh, And I was very honored that I was the one that was called. Uh, and I'm very glad now that there are a, a number of other transgender advocates and educators that uh, have now finally stepped up in the Kansas City area and, and throughout a little bit more of the Midwest. But for a while there, it was um, – I was honored to keep getting asked, yes, but I was mm-hmm. also a little frustrated that I was the only one. And so it's good to see that there's been some growth in the transgender community there in Kansas City. Uh, Just as a frame of reference, when I left Portland, there were probably two dozen uh, different therapists that handled gender identity issues. When I got to Kansas City, I learned that there were four. Wow. When I left Portland, there was probably at least a dozen doctors that would help with uh, initiating hormonal uh, replacement therapy. And when I got to Kansas City, I found out that there were two. So, yeah, there was some culture shock going on there. But um, what I was able to accomplish there was really pretty remarkable. I I also had given um, one of the other things outside of the the Pride Festival in St. Joseph, uh, one of the, the other major things that I feel very good about is that uh, I had given a presentation on transgender and the law 
to a group of people through the local ACLU chapter. I knew their executive director, and I'd spoken to their group one time before. Well, what I did not know was a, we all had, had the, the introductions, my name is, and all this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I did not know was the person that showed up late was a woman by the name of Beth Gottstein who serves or served at the time on the Kansas City City Council. And after I got through all of the the presentation on transgender in the law, which is getting better, but we still have a lot of black holes and gray areas and unanswered questions, Mm -hmm. um, Councilwoman Gottstein, and again, I don't know who she is, I don't recognize her, asked the question, do you think that uh, gender identity will ever be included in the Kansas City anti-discrimination laws, which years earlier had reached out to lesbian and gay. So sexual orientation was there, but gender identity was not. And I told her the truth. I said I knew of one woman that had been working on it, but she had stopped and has now left the area, and I didn't know anybody else that was picking up doing the legwork on that, and that's one of the things I don't do. I mean, I'll educate anybody and go talk and be on a panel, whatever you want, but I don't do the political lobbying part. That's just for my own emotional health, and so uh, we left it at that. I had no idea who she was, and a couple of months later, I get a call from a friend of mine that said, did you know that the Kansas City Council is taking up gender identity, there's going to be a hearing on Monday. Well, this is Friday. I hadn't heard anything about it. Uh, I talked to all of my friends. They hadn't heard anything about it. And so I didn't know where this was coming from, and they hadn't talked to us. Uh, I did some more calling around, as it turned out, that, yeah, they had intended to get a hold of me and hadn't yet. They wanted me to testify. I did. Um so I go before a, a subcommittee on Monday and said my thing, along with a few others, including Councilwoman Gotsby. It went before the city council, the full city council, the next day, and it unanimously passed. Uh, so now, and, yeah, you know, and and to have, mm-hmm. have played a role in that, I, yeah, I all I say is that I, I may have been. Um, What's the chemical agent that excites things? I keep thinking mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, I, I, I oh, may have been yeah. part of that process. But yeah. um, you were a catalyst. I, that's what the catalyst. Yeah, the catalyst. Yeah. I may have been the catalyst for that. Mm-hmm. But um, to have been had any role in it whatsoever, and Councilwoman Gottstein later referenced that presentation before ACLU is why she got involved. So, Fantastic. Uh, you know, you can't – how many people can say they've been involved in history not once but twice? Right. And, yeah, and and you have made a difference, my friend, and, and I thank you for that. And let's – hello? Yeah. thought I heard a whistle. Okay. Uh, let's bring the thread of our stories back together. Uh, I It was late 1980s. I – Moved away from Portland to Newport on the beautiful Oregon coast, about a two and a half, three hour distance. So, you know, at that point our paths diverged a bit, but you and I were still in touch and uh, especially through a mutual longtime friend of ours at the radio station. And then when the news came of your transition, uh, which you know, you mentioned your role on the Portland Winter Hawks Western Hockey League broadcast team, that that generated some media attention in Portland. I remember a front-page story in one of the Portland papers and then uh, a, a, a TV news feature on the local KGW affiliate. And my first reaction was probably, oh, wow. My second reaction was, oh, it's great for her. And I don't think, let's see, I, you know, uh, in the last, in the, in the years since your transition, we've only seen each other in person twice. The first time I think you had already made the move to Kansas City, but you were back visiting and we were able to get together at the Burger King here in Newport. Is that, is my memory of that timeline correct? 
We hadn't moved to Kansas City yet. Uh, my ah, wife and I. Were getting ready. It was, uh, and I, I remember this because it was in early October, near my birthday. And for uh-huh. many, many years, the hockey season also starts at that time, so I very rarely got to, to celebrate my own birthday. I was always uh-huh. busy. Uh, so that weekend, we decided to go down to uh, the coast, and I reached out to you and, and said, hey, you want to have lunch? And, and, yeah, we were able to uh, get together and have a lunch, and I just remember that you were so gracious in seeing Donna for the first time. And... That isn't always the case. You know, when, when yeah. we are in counseling toward transition, we are told that uh, we are going to lose some family members. We are mm-hmm. going to lose some friends. There is yep. no way to determine which one you will lose and which ones you will keep. And just be prepared for it. And yep. so I have yep. always been very thankful to those, such as yourself, who have stayed with me all these years. So. And that was very early in my transition, too, mm-hmm. so to, to mm-hmm. have it happen so early uh, was really a big emotional boost to me, and I thank you for that that day. Well, you're welcome, and as I confess to you much more recently, 99.99% of me was filled with absolute joy at seeing you and for you having uh, the opportunity to make this transition, and that one little... Uh, selfish part of me and the way back of my head was saying, dang it, she got to do it and good on her, but it's too bad you never will. But sure enough, Claire's day came. And my well, own decision and, go ahead. Yeah. You know, go ahead, go ahead. I, I know no, your head. I was just, yeah, yeah. That when, you know, I began my own soul searching in earnest last year, which culminated in the decision in December uh telling my therapist that, yes, I'm going to do this, Claire is going to be born into the world. One of the first things she said, as well as a few other uh, other friends, was, I sure hope you can find a tran- uh, friend or two who has already traveled this journey. And I said, just one of the reasons I consider myself an exceptionally lucky person is I not, I not only have one dear friend who has done it, but I have two. And so you were one of the very first people that I reached out to with the news. And uh, I don't know, do you want to talk about that and how you received it and uh, how 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 we've connected over that? Uh, but, uh, you know, well, let me say up front first from my perspective, our conversations by telephone and by Facebook were enormously helpful to me, enormously affirming to me. I still look back at my nice little red journal covered in artificial red leather, and in one conversation, you know, you you were talking about some of the struggles you had dealt with in this, and where I was maybe still a little bit on the fence, but I just wrote in big, bold block letters and underlined it several times. What the heck are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, when uh, when you sent that note to me in October and it said nothing uh-huh. about uh-huh. why you wanted to get a hold of me, uh, uh-huh. I, I saw the note and I wrote you back and I closed my computer and I turned to my wife and I said, well, Bill Hall is going to be transitioning. And wow. she, oh, she wow. said, how do you know? And I said, I, I got a, a random uh, email or message. I guess it was through Facebook. I get a random uh-huh. um, message out of the blue. Can I call you to talk sometime? Now, uh-huh. the reason I knew at that time Claire, was because that has happened with me before. When I was Mm -hmm. in Kansas City, I would find people who would send me a note out of the blue, can I talk Mm -hmm. with you sometime? Uh, I Mm -hmm. have had any number of people come out to me either at the end of one of my presentations or uh, in contacting me after my presentations or finding out who I am through another source and getting a hold of me, can I come and talk with you sometime? 
And so um, when that note came, I, I got a great big smile because I knew uh-huh. where I knew where you were you were headed. Now I, I want to say this: whenever you encounter somebody uh, in your life that is perhaps a friend or an acquaintance or a coworker, when you learn that they are thinking of transitioning and then others come out and find out that you know, one of the first questions they ask is, well, did it surprise you? Mm -hmm. Did Claire's note surprise you? And I'd like Mm -hmm. to suggest to you and, and to this audience, that's the wrong question. Because I'm never surprised when somebody Mm -hmm. says that they are going to transition. The proper question is, was there anything in Claire's previous life that you knew as as, uh, you were friends all those years? Was there anything in her previous life that led you to believe this was going to happen? And my answer to that question, which I consider to be the better question, is a quote from R. Buckminster Fuller, which is, there is nothing about a caterpillar that leads you to believe it's going to become a butterfly. Uh, Oh, that takes my breath away. That takes my breath away. Was I surprised? No. Uh, Mm -hmm. Was there anything in, in our former relationship that led me to believe this was going to be a Uh, part of your future? No. But that was the caterpillar phase. Today you are the beautiful butterfly that you are. And I think that's always the the better way to look at that question. Was I surprised? No. Uh, I've seen so many people come out. I mean, we've we've had an Olympic gold medalist come out. We've had actors and actresses come out. We have had any number of people come out as trans, uh, the filmmakers, the Wachowski sisters. It doesn't surprise me. Um, Because of that, though, uh, people still wonder, you know, were you you surprised? And no, I I wasn't surprised. Uh, The caterpillar is now a butterfly. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. And just one anecdote I will share, if we could share with the audience that – Adds a adds a little a little humor to this situation. We have one longtime colleague and friend that I've mentioned, and uh, I remember him telling me that you shared the news with him over lunch one day. So, you know, as I was doing my coming out process this spring, I was headed into Portland and for a weekend, and I asked him if he would be available for. Uh, lunch or uh, breakfast or lunch sometime that I had some big personal news to share that uh, and that I would rather share in person rather than you know over the phone if possible and he said oh okay sure and so we actually ended up uh, going to breakfast together and uh, this is of course after you knew several weeks after you knew, but uh, you know I wanted to bring our other friend into into the confidence, and I gave him the news, and as I expected, knowing that he has been you know uh, affirming and positive towards you all the way, that he was exactly the same towards me. But I think the two of you had a phone conversation af- afterwards, and what did he say? Well. Uh, and you're talking about uh, you're talking about somebody that has been in my life since 1968, uh, right? And mine and, since 1975. So, right. Old so both, yeah. This, the third friend here has has been part of our lives for many, many, many years. And yep. um, when my when my marriage was finally ending, uh, I just we used to go to we were coworkers still. Um, and I said, you know, let me treat you to lunch. And, that, and at mm-hmm. that lunch, I told him that my my first marriage was falling apart. Well, now we come down to the point where I'm going to have to transition soon. And mm-hmm. I again, I, I reach out and said, uh, you know, let me well, let me take you to treat you to lunch. So we did. Uh-huh. And that's where I I told him. And at the end of that, he said, well, I'm not going to lunch with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, so now, and told me, yeah, 
Yeah, go ahead. So now uh, you had told me that you were going to be having breakfast with him, and uh-huh. I kind of held my breath uh, all day, waiting <laughs> waiting for some response. And uh-huh. later that afternoon, I get this. Uh, uh, it was a Facebook note. Uh, just uh-huh. a little quickie, all, and all it said was, well, now I can't go to lunch with Bill Hall either. And so, uh, <laughs> and I knew exactly, he's got a wonderfully dry sense of humor, and exactly. I knew exactly what he meant, yes. and yes. he knew exactly what he was saying. So uh, yes. in, a, in, a, in a very lovely way, he connected our two journeys uh, I together. Love that. I cherish that. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I do too. So, Donna, we're g- this has been a great conversation. I hope maybe you'll consider coming back on to Ask Claire at some point. But uh, we do need to, I think, wrap it up for today. So I'd like to maybe ask you to close uh, maybe with a message for someone, you know, who's listening who perhaps has a friend, a coworker, an acquaintance that uh, – you learn that they are embarking on this journey and just any words of wisdom, guidance, advice on how to be a good friend, a supportive ally, and just be there and help that person along? Well, I think your two words there, be there, uh, is probably the best I can offer. Uh, Another way I usually say it is that this is for trans people a journey it is not a destination and if if to be a friend uh, a family member some a coworker that needs and wants to be supportive just walk with that person uh, you don't have to really say anything uh, yep. just emotionally even physically sometimes just walk with them let them share uh, and uh, don't hesitate to ask questions if they've opened that door for you. But just to be there, I wound up mm-hmm. teaching, I don't know how many kids at Benson High School. I was a softball coach for 16 years. I have no idea how many kids I coached. And I feel very fortunate, doubly fortunate, that I have still some of those people in my life through Facebook and, and other means To stay with somebody uh, means the world to them. And Mm -hmm. so it can make a huge difference in the success of their transition or the lack of success in their transition. Uh, Just just be present. Be with them. Be there. Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, on that note, I think we're going to need to wrap up this edition of Ask Claire, but Donna Ross, Thank you again so much for being my guest, my inaugural guest. And right now I will, I've been searching for a sign off for this program and so I'm going to uh, shamelessly steal from Roy Rogers because somehow it just feels right. I'll say to Donna, to my producer Ralph Tycho, to everybody in the listening audience, happy trails to you until we meet again. This has been a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production.